So I was invited here today by AME to measure AMROP tombstones because AME cares about the science of vibration. I'm Dr. Tony Schmitz. I'm a professor at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. I specialize in vibration measurement for physical systems. So today I'm visiting AME in order to measure the difference in vibration response of tombstones um, that are manufactured from different materials. So when I put a tombstone on a machine, I want a couple things. I want it to be stiff and I want it to dissipate energy or I want it to have high damping. And so what we're gonna test today is both the stiffness and the damping for these different tombstones. So we might ask the question, why does damping matter in a tombstone? Well, if we think about machining, we can either have stable machining operation or we can have chatter, which is a self-excited vibration that leads to large forces, large deflections, bad surface finish, something we want to avoid. The higher the damping, the less likely it is that we'll get chatter when we're machining on that tombstone. So we tested four materials today. Uh, we started with cast iron, which is the most common material for tombstones, and then went to steel, aluminum, and finally epoxy, and we'll compare the results for all four. So for each one of the tombstones, we did two separate tests. The first is to measure something called a frequency response function. So what that means is the output, the vibration, over the input, the force, in the frequency domain. So I see all the natural frequencies of the structure and the damping ratio associated with each one of those natural frequencies. The second test that we used was where we just looked at the free vibration response. So we tapped it with a hammer and then we looked at the decay rate of the accelerometer signal for each one of the four materials. In order to test the vibration response of a structure, we want to put in a known force and then measure the response um, due to that force. So we're using what's called a modal hammer it has a force transducer inside it that measures the force that I input into the system. And then I have an accelerometer which measures the vibration response due to that force. And so the hammer force that we put in is a couple hundred newtons, which is about 50 pounds. Um, and then that force is sufficient to excite the structure into its vibration behavior, which we then measure. And then looking at the different responses that we get, we can compare the vibration behavior of these tombstones. In the plot, we see a comparison between the aluminum, which is the dark green, and the epoxy, which is the light green. What, what is immediately observable is that the epoxy tombstone had its vibra vibration decay much more quickly than the aluminum tombstone. So the light green went back to zero much more quickly than the dark green, which is the aluminum. That indicates the epoxy has much higher damping than the aluminum material. So the analysis of the data that we collected today um, is gonna show a few things. One, it's gonna show the decay rate um, for the free vibration in different materials. We're also gonna be able to extract the stiffness and damping from the individual vibration modes for the tombstones. Collectively, when that data is assembled, we'll be able to, to talk unequivocally about the advantages of one material over another in different applications. What did that first test tell us? I mean, you don't have to get into all the nuts and bolts, but it, when we compared steel tombstones with epoxy mineral tombstones with cast iron tombstones and aluminum tombstones, what did the, how did they all rank when it came to that dynamic stiffness? Yeah, so um, we found cast iron and steel had similar results with a little more damping for the cast iron, um, but at opposite ends of the spectrum were the aluminum and epoxy. The aluminum had very little damping and the epoxy had a whole lot of damping. On, so on each side of the cast iron and steel. So less mass, you can kind of move the table quicker. And if you're moving the table quicker, you can process the part faster. But on the flip side of that, if, if you have too much vibration going on, you may not get the, uh, the quality of um, like surface finish, or you might, um, if you're vibrating too much, you might wear out your cutting tools more than you would if you, if you weren't vibrating so much. So you don't really like weight or vibration, right? You want to try to get rid of both of those as much as possible. Would that be pretty much the case here? That's what we're trying to accomplish with epoxy. 
You're absolutely right. So there's three things that can happen. I can have a dynamic stiffness, which is low enough that I actually get chatter, right? So I get this self-excited vibration, which leads to very poor surface finish. But let's say that I do, I have selected machining conditions that give me a stable cut. There's still going to be vibration. And as we've demonstrated the frequency response function measurements, both on the rubber mats and then on the machine tools, um, the, the dynamic stiffness varies between these four materials. And so lower dynamic stiffness means a higher vibration magnitude. If I have stable cuts and a high vibration magnitude, the things that tend to happen are my, my workpiece surface finish, suffers, right? If I have a larger vibration magnitude, then I tend to have a rougher surface. And then also my um, tool life tends to degrade. So I have a lower tool life with higher vibration magnitude than with smaller. So I can, by having increased dynamic stiffness, I can reduce the potential for chatter. I can improve my surface finish and I can improve my tool life. All are important in a machining environment. In the first set of tests, we were able to directly compare the behavior of these four different materials with similar geometries. When we machine, though, when we mount a workpiece on a tombstone and then machine on that workpiece, the complication is that the tombstone becomes part of a larger system. So we have the tombstone mounted on the machine tool, which is mounted on the floor, and so it's it's actually that entire dynamic system which governs the machining behavior. And so we wanted to verify, hey, if I put four different tombstones on the same machine tool and then machine a workpiece on those tombstones, do I still see the same trend in behavior that we saw with the tombstones alone?